When it comes to the market of zoom lenses, they all tend to stay in the same framework. Most major brands offer a 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200. These are all great lenses, the build quality is phenomenal, and the image is tack sharp, but if you're like me, you just can't afford them. That's where this lens comes in. It's a unique zoom range that we haven't seen before, and the price is actually reasonable for what you get. This is the Tamron 20 to 40 mil 2.8 lens. I want to look at this lens and see how practical it can be for the everyday shooter, someone who wants a light, fast, easy lens to use. So let's take a look. This lens is offered on the Sony E-mount cameras. The front filter thread size is 67 millimeters. It has a 2.8 aperture all the way through. It's compatible with Tamron's lens utility software, so you can customize the lens's functions and update the firmware. It has their new VXD linear motor for fast, quiet autofocus. It's moisture resistant to some extent, but I haven't been able to see if I could break it. I think the build quality is nice. Both the focus and zoom ring are easy to turn, and they have a nice grip to them. The one thing I noticed is that the zoom extends on the wider end, which is something I haven't seen before. There's no AF, MF switches or buttons on the lens like there are with some of the newer Tamron lenses, but this doesn't bother me because I don't really use those features anyway. Now, a few months ago, I was personally needing a wider lens. I love the 20 millimeter focal length because it's wide and doesn't give off that ridiculous amount of distortion you get from a 16 millimeter lens or something wider. So the two lenses I was looking at was the Tamron 20 to 40 and the Sony 20 mil 1.8 G lens. These two lenses are surprisingly close in dimensions. They both weigh about the same and even have the same filter size. Obviously the Sony is a prime lens, so it has a shallower depth of field at 1.8, has an aperture ring built on the lens, AF MF switches, and an added button for customizability, but it's also 200 more dollars than the Tamron is. This made me really question which lens I should buy for myself. So let's put this lens to the test and see where it succeeds and where it fails. I wanted to show you what you get focally with this lens. Here's the same shot taken at a few different focal lengths. The image looks pleasing to my eye. The colors look accurate and it seems fairly sharp, but the distortion on this lens is present. There is obviously some bowing in the corners when you shoot at 20 millimeters. Here you can see some of the corners bending quite a bit. When we shoot at the 40 mil in, this doesn't seem to be as much as an issue, but it's just something to take note of. The bokeh on this lens is fine. It's a 2.8 lens, so I'm not expecting too much. I'm not going to pixel peep because I don't get too technical with lenses, but it looks pleasing to my eye. One thing I noticed that I didn't like is the focus breathing. When your subject is further away, this doesn't seem to be an issue, but the minute you get closer to the frame, you really start to see the breathing. And because it isn't a Sony lens, it's not compatible with Sony's focus breathing compensation, but my camera doesn't even have that feature. I'm just saying, Sony. If I was only to use this lens, I'd try to take advantage of what it offers, its size and zoom range. There are some areas that this lens really shines. Because of its lightweight, I was able to throw it on a gimbal, walk around, and be able to zoom in without the gimbal getting all out of balance. Another area was being able to throw this on a car mount inside and outside of a vehicle. Again, the weight and zoom range made this one lens a wonder for this type of shooting. And of course, if you're wanting to walk around with this lens, it balances nicely on the Sony bodies and doesn't feel like it's dragging you down on a camera strap. At the end of the day, I personally picked up this lens. The autofocus was spot on, the focal length is what I was needing, and the size and weight gave me the ability to keep it in my bag at all times. I found this lens to be good for the option of someone who typically leans on the wider end of shooting, or someone who's using it for a gimbal, shooting video in tight spaces. It's small, light, and capable. It's not nearly as nice as the Sony 20mm Prime, but for the price point, you can't go wrong with this lens. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And if you're looking for camera gear, please make sure to check out the Gear Focus website. We'll see you guys in the next video.